Hello Hypercubists, this is Adrian from Hungary and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I solve Melinda's 2x2x2x2 two by two by two by two, um, four-dimensional Rubik's type tesseract puzzle. Um, yeah, just a couple of words about me. I'm uh, 37 years old, I'm an electrical engineer and I've been playing with higher dimensional Rubik's type puzzles since 12 or 13 years so yeah I have some experience um, at the beginning of this video um, I would like to say a big thank you to Melinda Green for all her efforts and all her work uh, to create us this uh, this uh, wonderful and incredible puzzle so that we can have it in our hands and we can play with it in real so Thank you, Melinda. Okay, now I'm going to change the camera position. Um, and I try to fix it on my table so you guys have a clear visualization of what I am, of what I am doing. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it will be it will be okay. Um, first of all, I would like to remark two things um, that you guys should know. First of all, I'm not a speed solver, so this will not be a speed solving uh, video. I'm, I'm more interested in, uh, in uh, creating different algorithms and sequences uh, to solve different situations on the cube, so um, I'm not really uh, excited about speed solving. Um, the second thing I would like to highlight here at the beginning is uh, is that I I am using a little bit different notations that you or most of the hypercubers use. Um, I heard you call this uh, this uh, cell here in the middle uh, some in cell or inner cell and uh, in some of you call this this uh, sides uh, as an outer cell uh, for me um, i'm going to use a little bit different notations and i explain why mm. on a standard three-dimensional two by two by two uh, Rubik's Cube, we have this color scheme, as you know. Usually um, the white is the upside, uh, yellow is the downside, and, um, and uh, for me, I don't know why, but uh, I'm always uh, using the red side as the front side, the blue uh, the right side, orange the back side and the green is the left side for me i just get used to it and uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm using this uh, color scheme so to preserve this color scheme on the four dimensional cube i decided to use uh, to call the the purple uh, cell this purple cell is the top cell for me and this way the color scheme will be the same on the four-dimensional cube uh, like uh, in the three-dimensional cube and since this is the top face um, obviously this will be the kata uh, face or cell and uh, in the and since I always keep the kata cell on the right of the top cell so uh, this uh, blue cell in the middle for me it is the right face uh, of the cube so top cell cut a cell and this is the right cell uh, clearly uh, the red is the front the orange is the back yellow is down and the green greens are the left side of the cube uh, in my notations. I just told you this because if you if you see any of my algorithms mm, written somewhere I will use these uh, notations. 
Okay, let's get started and let's scramble this. Uh, let's scramble this cube. I really like this uh, scrambling method because you only need a couple of these moves and uh, and the cube will be scrambled really good, really well. So I may do one more. Just uh, yeah, I think it will be enough. So. Let's just say this is my scramble and I will start the sol the solution um, with the same. I'm going to um, I'm going to orient the top face colors, which is the purple uh, corners here, the top face colors is purple. So I'm going to orient the purple colors stickers uh, and I'm going to do it as anybody else. Uh, I'm going to make pairs. Mm, so this one is here, this one is there, so no. Um, yeah, and we have a pair here. And I'm going to make another pair. Uh, yes, this way. So I have a pair here and I have a pair there. I'm going to make an RKT move just to be able to separate them. So yeah, I'm going to put it down, then put it up and we make the pairs here. Okay, three stickers is facing out, which is uh, not good because uh, we cannot access these uh, stickers uh, in this view. So and here is only one, but uh, we cannot do anything with that. So I'm going to make a gyro move now to um, make a different view of this cube. And there we can manipulate the, the purple stickers. I'm going to make this back. Mm, okay. So now we have all um, purple stickers facing in. This There is one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to make pairs. This is the first pair. This is another um, purple sticker. We just have to find the next one here. Uh, yes. Okay, so... I'm going to put it up here. Yeah, and I need an RKT turn to be able to separate them. All right, so um, no. Uh, yeah, and there is a purple sticker there. So I put the one down here. Um, Just a moment, let me think a little bit. Oh yeah, mm. so I'm going to put this down. We have a sticker here um, and we can pair up these now. And um, where is the other one here? So I need to make again an RKT turn here to be able to separate these uh, these um, purples and now we can pair them. Yeah, so this is the same strategy that anybody else uh, using. So um, the next step is to orient the pink um, the pink stickers here on the on the other face of the cube. I'm going to use normal th uh, normal 3D algorithms uh, performed in RKT uh, to orient these uh, uh, these pink stickers. Um, yeah, there are 
as, as you know, uh, there are seven OLL algorithms on the three-dimensional two by two by two. I'm going to use exactly those algorithms uh, only in RKT. So this, uh, I don't care about these uh, uh, stickers that facing out outwards. Uh, we will deal with them later. We have two. Um, we will only take care of the stickers which is facing in and uh, we are going to make uh, different cases for example uh, this this two next to each other and this one uh, reminds me a t case so i'm going to use a t algorithm to flip up this uh, sticker here so in RKT, I'm going to do an R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R, and F prime. Okay, so these three stickers are now up. And let me check uh, what is the situation on the other cell. On the other cell, I can see this, this, and this. I ignore this piece at the moment. So yeah, this is a pi case. If I hold the cell like this, so they are opposite and yeah, they it's like a adjacent uh, uh, pink stickers. So I'm going to use the pi case to to flip up these two and this one up here. Yeah, so the algorithm for the pi is R, U2, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, R2, U2, and R. All right, so we flipped up three and three stickers uh, on both cells and now we have to deal with these uh, these corners facing out i'm just going to do a gyro in order to access these stickers and be able to manipulate them yep yeah. so we have another uh, case here which is the T case, two stickers adjacent and two stickers opposite. So this is again a T case and I'm going to solve it with uh, T, case T case OLL algorithm in RKT. So R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R and F prime and all the purple and the pink stickers are ready. We are fortunate that we uh, didn't have um, special cases like mono flips or, or something like that. So we are done. We again do a gyro and all the purple and the pink stickers will be oriented. So we are ready with 25% of the cube mm, and now I'm going to now I'm going to solve the white stickers uh, exactly with the same method that I use in the 2x2x2 two by two by two, mm, with RKT. So let me see what I can do first. Yeah, for example, I can do the these two stickers are done now. I'm going to take this sticker out here. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it in the right position. Okay, and we have one last and this is this can be 
replaced this way. Okay, so I solved the white uh, face of the of the top cell. Now I'm going to solve the white face on the cotta cell. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to solve the blue first. Here. Here are the two uh, white and blue. Um, okay, I'm solving the white red here, and we have only one the blue, um, sorry, the green. Okay, so this is quite easy. And we have 50% of the cube ready. And now uh, we have to we have to solve the yellow pieces on uh, the yellow uh, stickers on the on the uh, other face of the top and the cutter cell. So I'm going to use exactly uh, the same 3D algorithms. So this is a T case again, two adjacent to opposite. So I'm going to use an RKT move uh, for this. So uh, yeah, everything is correct. So R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R, and F prime. Okay, and let's see what is the situation on the cotta cell. The cotta cell, on the cotta cell we have a H case, so we can use the H case OLR to solve this, which is R2, U2, R, U2, and R2. Okay, so we have oriented all the yellows and now we can permute, uh, permute uh, the last layer. Yeah, I will turn this and okay, on the top face we have a adjacent swap required and on the cutoff face we have an opposite um, swap required. So let's do first uh, the adjacent here and I'm going to perform the adjacent swap algorithm, algorithm not in RKT because if I do it with RKT that will only solve this too, but there will be no change on the cut of face. But I would like to make uh, the solution a little bit shorter. So I'm going to perform this uh, algorithm not in RKT, but in a normal way. And there, therefore, it will flip, uh, it will swap these two uh, corners as well. So after that, I'm going to have a adjacent swap here as well, not an opposite swap. So um, I'm going to use the PLL uh, and I'm going to make it not RKT version. So L U prime R prime U L prime U two R U prime R prime U two and R. Okay, and 
yeah this is solved and let me check what is the situation here yeah this is paired up so if I turn one here then you can see that we have a adjacent swap required also to solve this two pieces two elements so uh, in RKT now and we will do the same uh, adjacent swap algorithm so L U prime R prime U L prime U2 R U prime R prime U2 and R. Yep, that solved these two corner pieces and we have a RKT parity here which we will solve uh, with the following algorithms R2, B2, R2, U, R2, B2, R2, and U prime. Yep, there is uh, my solve. I was lucky because there was no monoflip situation and uh, any other tricky cases, but uh, yeah, I have the I have the algorithms to do that, so it's no problem. Um, and at the, at the end of this video, I would like to show you a beautiful algorithm. Um, as most of you know, uh, on the 3D cube, you cannot have a full checkerboard pattern on even layered uh, cubes, like on a 2x2 or a 4x4 or a 6x6. You cannot make the full checkerboard pattern in three dimensions but in four dimensions you can do a full checkerboard pattern on uh, even layered cubes like uh, on Melinda Melinda's 2x2x2x2 two by two by two by two. so I'm going to show you uh, 12 no sorry a 20 uh, twists algorithm which will uh, make uh, the full checkerboard pattern here um, one thing uh, I would like to uh, highlight I know that there is a discussion about these double turns for example this uh, double turns of the, of the middle um, cell uh, as I told you this is the right cell for me so actually for me in, in my notations this is the uh, R Y2 R Y2 um, and this is absolutely uh, a valid and then um, and a canonical uh, move because it is uh, it ends up um, in legal so, uh, situation um, but since this is not uh, added to the canonical moves I'm just using this uh, two moves for uh, for fun like uh, for this uh, for this uh, checkerboard pattern but uh, I don't use this move uh, in my solutions but here we will use it so here is the algorithm so u2 r2 u2 f2 Tz2 front y2 ty2 again front y2 now a left y2 and ux2 Ta -da. 
This is a full checkerboard pattern made on Melinda's 2x2x2x2 four dimensional Rubik's Cube. So, yeah, this was my video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you for watching this and happy hypercubing. Bye.